keep Wall Street occupied, the fun and creative way to occupy your credit card junk mail. I saw that on um, LA's Occupy feed. And I'm like, I think I saw something about that. Uh, we need we need to advertise this. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. Is it like sending back the reply mm -hmm. envelopes? Yeah. Yeah, and like <laughs> sending like like um, messages like worker join a union, like <laughs> Occupy Wall Street or other stuff like that. I was like, yes. I kind of wish I didn't put myself on the. Um, do not send list. Yeah. <laughs> I used to constantly get stuff from Capital One. Oh, I. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know, the thing that I hate, like, I really hate them because they tried to, like, fuck me over in college with a credit card. I had, like, a $200 credit limit on this card. Who was it? Capital One. Oh, yeah. But, like, I heard, like, how they treat, like, their tech workers. Mm. Like, they actually throw job fairs for the people they lay off. <laughs> That's how, like, because they, like, basically they hire you and they, like, already know they're going to, like, lay you off. It's fucked up. That's kind of why I'm trying to start, like, a software cooperative in Richmond to, like, not just, like, give people, like, you know, a better environment to work in, um, but also to put pressure on these companies that they can't just do this shit anymore. Um, what do you guys think of that, like, kind of philosophical proposal put at the, um, the GA that was called the Quaker Church? Um, that we are not a leaderless movement, but a leaderful movement. And what kinds of um, implications do you think that'll have in media? Media. I don't know. I don't know. Can I help you? Do you need help or anything? No. I, okay. I mean, I mean, what kind? I mean, what do you guys think about that overall, though? That that transition. Because everybody really like liked it. There was a lot of people like putting up the fingers for that. I mean, you know, my, my honest opinion is that it's a it's a it's a question of semantics. Yeah, it's a rhetorical thing. I mean, it's something we already all know. But some people are really attached to semantics, so you know. I mean you think they're the same thing? I mean what, what let me turn it around, like why do you think it's important? Um because it might dictate kind of how we continue to shape our structure. I mean, we've had a, some major changes or some major like new things occurring politically within the movement, um, and direct action is getting a lot more like concrete about what the plan is. Um, so it's like, I don't know. I thought it was a very interesting way it was posed, not just as an opinion, but as like, an actual proposal. That uh, it wasn't it's kind of just like. We're accepting this new phase and not just going into it with just a faith of everybody taking accountability of one another, but also that everybody's a leader in themselves. Um, well, I've certainly seen a lot of journalism around the idea that they say they're leaderless, but they're really not. Yeah. So maybe that's a way to short circuit that. Yeah. They say they're. They say they're leaderless, yeah, but they're leader really not. The there's usually in facilitation. There's a core group of people or media. That sort of like do a lot of the work and therefore have a lot of the say, right? And this is in journalism about the movement nationwide. I, yeah, yeah. Like I read a, a New Yorker article about Occupy Wall Street <clears throat> that was basically saying that, which isn't necessarily false. It's not necessarily false that there are a lot of people who have a lot more influence than other people. Kind of like a de facto leadership thing. Well, that's what, what a lot of the complaints have been. I mean, that's certainly been a complaint in our movement, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it, yeah, is it a fact of leadership, or is it... That's why well, Claire said what she said at the last GA. She was like, I think she, I think she said, like, uh, I think a lot of people confuse leaders with people who do a lot of work. 
<clears throat> and therefore, because they do a lot of work, they get a lot of sort of effective and they have more control. Influence exactly. Over other people, and it can just get messy. It certainly has already gotten messy, in my opinion. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's sort of like, I mean, this might sound really close out. There's like, there's a fine line between wanting everybody's voice to be heard and saying, um, I'm going to call on you because your voice right. isn't loud. I mean, does that person deserve to be called on because their voice isn't loud, you know, because they're not assertive? Yeah. I mean, do they somehow have a right to be called on and, you know, to have the group push them forward because of that? I mean, well, it's an open I, question. That's, you know, I, I, I think that's a, a, a valid question, and I do think that that person has a right to be called on when it comes to, like, decision-making. But at the same time, there's on the other end of it, like, you have, in the, in the process of that decision-making, do you have, you know, the people yes, who aren't really doing anything and are, you know, then making decisions that other people have to implement? That's yeah, the biggest thing for me. I mean, I, I have a fair amount of self-concern about that, too, because I don't come to as many of the events, and I'm not doing as much of the work as I see other people doing, and I, I ask that my, myself, too. Yeah, I mean, the, from the very beginning of this, like, getting involved in it, one of my biggest complaints was that GA would task groups with extra duties without requisitioning more resources for them. Like, media should be doing this. Like, direct action should be doing this. Like, well, there's a reason maybe that they're not doing it because they don't have enough people to do it or somebody's not... Like, I wanted to have it, like, this back when I was, like, really into the process and didn't see all the downsides of it, I was like, there should be no proposal that does new work without having somebody bottom line it. Because... You pass resolutions all day, right? But unless you have somebody that's going to really make line. sure it gets done, right? right. What are you doing? Yeah. Mm. And then we get used to the idea that GA is just ceremonial and not huh. a real deliberative body that makes effective decisions. Right. Yeah. So I mean that kind of ties into like messaging policy, which is on your agenda. I mean. Um, None of y'all are leaving here without us talking about messaging at least a little bit. Yeah. Because we've tried to do, remember last yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it keeps coming up. I looked at the email, the Gmail, the media Gmail, and like everything I saw was just like I don't even know. Mm-mm. Someone else is gonna have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I could try to write back a response that could be helpful, but. But also they're coming into personal emails as well, those same emails, or the same contact as contacting other people within the movement. Mm-hmm. And then they're coming back to either me or to William. So there's different filters that are just naturally occurring within themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I'm getting, right now I'm getting emails from professors who want to write papers about Occupy. Who am I sending that to? Mm-hmm. Like who, who should I be giving this to? Should I just take it on myself to find the right person? Or should I just send them an email of, Thanks for getting back to me. Yeah, so it's like there needs to be some kind of better way to get them to the right people. Um, But also, you know, how long should we wait to respond to a person? Should we respond immediately saying thanks for your email, we'll get back to you? Or should we be making right away a statement for that particular person? Somebody was sending around, somebody was compiling a list of the requests. Did you see that? It was in the Gmail. Rich was doing that, I think. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, because um, he was like, we have all these like interview requests that are like piling up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, if you could do anything on the wiki or anywhere else that could just make it sort of like a serial list of like a bucket list that we need to like do. So we just know what the bases are we need to hit. I guess he did that. Yeah, no, and uh, I mean, because some of it is, you know... Like, I was going through and looking at it, and some of, like, you can't even really tell where some of these people are from. Yeah. And so it's like, who are we talking to? Because for me, like, I have no problem talking to those people, that's fine. But I want to be able to at least look, okay, who am I talking to? What is the general bent of their, you know, publication or whatever it is? I want to have some idea of what I'm yeah. walking into. Otherwise, okay. use the press kit and shut up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there has been. I think there has been more response because of the press kit being put on the website. Oh yeah. Um, I think so. Um, yeah, Nate. Because why? Yeah. The press kit. Uh, Nate came up with the press kit that it, yeah. we have available it's now, really so that good. when they just need like boilerplate information. Um, with Nate, Phil, and Ira. Ira's okay. uh-huh. up. 
Um, and it just looks great. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think because, like, for example, we had a paper from you know from DC, our media source from DC, and I mean it was it, it's it's definitely going to be national. But what's more important? Who's the reader of that source? Mostly politicians. Um, mm -hmm. It's a moderate to leaning right mm -hmm. media source. So that was from our research of that particular source. So we need to be taking a, a look at these sources correctly and finding out are they automatically going to be our allies because they agree with us politically? Or are we going to have to kind of shape the truth a bit or really know what they're going to be throwing at us? I don't even know that it's shaping the truth so much as it's just speaking, speaking to them in their language about our so message. Not just that, though. They're going to be throwing constructive okay. questions at you, you to, right. to entrap you so that they can me. make negative, Come on. negative Come on. news. Not the pizza. So, yeah. for, no, you like that for example, if, if they, somebody yeah. said, you know, yeah. um, for example, this particular mm -hmm. paper wanted to show that we were, that the Tea Party was getting audited mm -hmm. and that taxpayers were paying for our movement, mm -hmm. for our raid. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of a negative connotation. So how do we disprove that by coming up with facts of why this isn't so, what the government did, the oh, yeah, government said that we didn't do? We have to be prepared politically to attack them if they're going to attack us. And that's why understanding who is our allies in media and who can we change their minds. That's a really important question. Because we are well, going mean, to start getting a lot more Republicans. Well, that also begs the question of are we going to talk to the people who aren't? Yes. Either middle of the road or with us. Good question. So, are we going to? Are we even going to open up that conversation with those particular? Yeah, I mean, God forbid, you know, <laughs> because of the sorry, silver, <laughs> because of the uh, the uh, fact that we've now gotten picked up by Fox News. Mm -hmm. Over the whole tea, tea party thing, God forbid somebody gets a phone call saying Bill O'Reilly wants to talk to somebody from Occupy Richmond. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but like, okay. isn't that love like to go on the show with him? Well, like personally, I have no problem doing that. So, but but can we make it? Can we flush that out a bit? Because I really need to know. We need to have a policy that stands with that. Are we? bringing that person, when we get uh, any kind of correspondence, are we bringing it directly to the media group and voting on whether or not we respond to this particular group? Or are we sending out an immediate reply? Because right now, we are sending out immediate replies. I think or it's, or someone's getting established to take on an immediate reply, and then somebody else is doing it. I, I, I think it makes sense to send out an immediate reply that says, we'll get back to you within 72 hours. Okay. That way, if it is somebody that we want to talk to and then we can take the time to figure out well who, which among us is the best person to talk to and you you think that should be a group decision it should not just be somebody answering up their own accord I don't necessarily think that but I think it should be more along the lines of hey we got contacted by so-and-so does anybody want to talk to him okay so if somebody just responded of their own accord yeah no I'm, I'm, me personally I'm fine with that you're fine with that yeah how about anybody else? I, I, uh, this kind of ties into something we were talking about earlier, but uh, uh, our uh, thank you. What what how we how we interact with the general assembly? You know, I, I think a lot of work groups are like doing the same thing that city council does and not giving good reports of like reporting everything that the work group is working on, mm -hmm. and that thereby denying like the general assembly the in information and knowledge that these work work teams uh, are are generating. But uh, what I wish the work teams would do, and this would get more engagement at the GAs from the, 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 the larger crowd, is uh, that work groups should kind of come up with proposals to, uh, to offer the General Assembly and say, we, we think we should do this for this whatever reason, and uh, we've got some options for you to, to help us direct our action or something. But that would uh, that would like let people know more what was going on, especially if you're going to give people 72 hours. That's three days, you know. But have we gone to four meetings a week? Is that what we're doing now? Oh, I, I was thinking more along the lines of if, if if we're responding, it would be somebody from the media group. Yeah. Not necessarily. I mean, if we want okay. to do that, well, we can go to the GA. Also, it, it's like if you're going to have like national, some sort of somebody talking to Bill O'Reilly or something. It's like they're. You know, we should probably have like somebody selected from the group 
you know, not just the media team selecting that individual, but, you know, there is, like, a lot of, like, you know, how much, uh, how much we're, we're taking on as a group, independent of, like, letting everyone know how we're, how we're, uh, acting or something. I, uh, no, I don't know. I can see that, but on the other hand, like, I think sometimes people feel like they need to check with GA about every little decision, and there's certain things where people should just take direct action as long right. as they're not speaking for the GA. <clears throat> so it's a fine line. Transparency is a whole different thing, though. Whether or not we get permission from the GA, mm -hmm. they should certainly know what we're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's where the reports can come in. Right. So, yeah, maybe we should, at the end of the week, we should be putting together a report of what correspondence we have managed to have throughout the week. Um, I mean, just to keep a little bulletin for ourselves, of we have we responded to so-and-so yet, have we responded to this person yet? I mean, I think that's why a spreadsheet is still a good idea, just having a kind of a general, like, account of when did so-and-so talk to this person. That way we can all we, see We can who even talk do that if... Uh... Google, Google Calendar, right? Yeah, we and can. And we can log it in. Okay, I got a contact from this person on this day, and so. they want, you know what I mean? And then you <laughs> can go and put it. We said 72 hours, must contact by this point. So um, the, only, the only hesitation I have towards that is that we already have so many things that we're plugging into online. Um, unless we commit to it. Maybe a Google Calendar is great, but maybe we should go a little further and print out um, the calendar every week for ourselves to have a hard copy and um, that way every meeting and meeting we can actually phys physically see who has been really keeping up with um, plugging into the calendar because mm -hmm. um, I just I know for a fact that maybe that it'll get a little complicated otherwise unless we have that physical like I feel like we, we need something that kind of keeps us as, as, as you know physical reminders that we can keep in our own daily record keeping. It's messaging. Mm -hmm. Anybody want pizza while I'm up? I think it's in a minute. <laughs> I'm working into it. Oh, there you go. I don't know why we're even talking about this. <laughs> We've already got plenty of people who uh, are willing to talk to uh, um, talk to the press. Oh yeah. I see on Facebook. I saw you posted last night about wanting an interview with someone, and now apparently he's speaking with Chris Dorsey. Right. <laughs> right. He's someone. <laughs> well, I, I think you it's know. That, it's uh, that Igor cat, right? Yeah. I think That's good. They'll get along well. I think it's important. Like, there's always plenty of people who want to talk to the press, but it's it, it goes back to that like training that we have not really implemented. That like, and if we can't do that, if we can't train the people who want to in the GA on how to talk to the press, we at least as a media group can take control as to how we talk to the press because this kind of all over the place, not knowing what time frame we're using or who we should be sending emails to, is happening within this group. Like. I think we need to come up with a firm backbone as to a seven, maybe maybe even a forty-eight hour, you know, email um, email back to that person saying thank you. Uh, yeah, seventy-two we was just, an, just you know, I was just throwing it out there. It's yeah, like, no. yeah, maybe even sooner, you know, like cause, yeah. I mean, maybe they are wanting a little speedier response. Um, I prefer a little longer, but I mean, I know that maybe news guys, you know, whatever in DC might want something a little faster. But also the set of priorities. Yeah, I, are we, yeah, the, are yeah, we responding to a local paper first or are we responding to a, a D.C. national headline first? Well, I think the other question is, you know, is some of this definitely should come down to, like, who are we talking to and who is this? Because there are some of them that really, as far as I'm concerned, if we don't talk to them at all, like, I don't care. You know, like, who cares? Well... Because they're not, you know, they're that not... That presumes a strategy that we have about how to make these decisions. Well, that's part of what we need to talk about, right? Right. Yeah. So, you know, what is the strategy? You know, I mean, I mean, I understand, like, I understand that perspective, and I agree to a certain extent, 
at the same time. I think it just it's practice for us getting better at being able to make an argument to groups who don't agree with us. And that in a way is outrage. And that in a way is Yeah, there that to a degree I, I think is definitely very true. Uh, on the other hand, I think there's like there's a difference between making an argument to somebody who doesn't agree with us but that who we may be able to come to a let's say a, a, a friendly compromise or you know what I mean like yeah. we may be able to come to kind of a, a sense of a general respect both ways you know what I mean um, yeah, uh, yeah. versus mm -hmm. like the people who are just they're not ever gonna you know what I mean? Like they're just not coming. Totally, totally. Uh, um, and that's a waste of our time. Who was there from the from the labor uh, unions? Uh, Luna, I believe her name was. Uh, she was really awesome. And uh, one of the things I wrote down from her meeting was that you should not be trying to engage necessarily people who disagree with you completely because right. they convolute the. Me She's like you have to find the people who are going to work with you and just really stretch that and get those things done. Yeah. Find, find the specific points of action you want and go for it. So if that's the strategy we want to go with, let's do that. I'm totally down with that. So, uh, you know, like, I mean, if you look at the people who are, we have like two or three different varieties of people who are coming to seek us out in the various media outlets. Yeah. They're either people who already agree with us people who have questions or people who are trolling. Okay, so I think what we have here right now, what I'm hearing, is that media as a way to get more buzz about Richmond, right? So media creating buzz about Richmond so people know about us, right? Mm -hmm. Because in that way, we're not going to reject an NBC12 thing, are we? Are we going to reject a Style Weekly article? No. Because on one hand, we want media to create more and more voice around Richmond. But on the other hand, we want to be more specific with tactics for certain political causes. Right. So that's two different things. Like how do we control that? Do you know what I mean? Because on one hand, we're going to take as many interviews and as many whoever as we can. And that's what we have been doing negative or non-negative, because all press is a good thing, right? But on the other hand, now we're saying... I don't know, I don't saying... know about that. I don't know. I, I, I think that all press is a good thing, but there's when you're, when you're taking that strategy, then sometimes the best press is they won't talk to us. Right, so... Right. You know what I mean? So it doesn't necessarily... So just personally, mm -hmm. off the top of your head, what would govern that kind of decision? From your point of view, like, how would you make that decision? Just hypothetically, like I'm just trying to figure out what the plan is. I probably, are. I would probably personally look at their history of the coverage of the movement so far, mm -hmm. and then that would probably give you a good, a good barometer as to whether or not there's even, like, is this gonna, is this gonna be us talking to somebody, or it's being used by somebody? Right. Yeah. You know, and that to me is the big thing. Is like I don't want us. You know, we've already run into that a couple of times sure. because we didn't see it. You know, that thing down at Kanawa killed me with Goldman. When I saw it, the video, I was like, oh, God. Like, this guy's going to run for mayor. That's why he's yeah. there. You know what I mean? Like, Teal. that's right. That's no. why he's there. And he just used us. Yeah. And, you know, what's his name? The reporter did the same thing. Yeah. And that he reporter? Oh, uh, no. Hey. He was from the RTD. Yeah. What was his name? What's his name? Mark Holmberg. Holmberg. Are we, and, um... Oh, um, would you rather not Mark Holmberg write about the movement? I'm just wondering, I mean, he, I he's one of, the, he's one of those people that talk about, about And I'm being critical, I just want to know what your opinion is. No, personally, I don't care if he writes about the movement, but we don't have to con contribute. Because he's, number one, he's not actually going to listen to anything that any of us have to yeah. say. So it sounds like he does fall in that category of... Right. Of, of, and he's, he's not helpful. he used us. He brought this other Goldman guy down there to use us as the kind of stumping point for Goldman to say, I'll be a better mayor than Jones, <laughs> and also to take some shots at us. Right. right. And so we need a shit list. We need a list of people that, hey, we don't work with these people. Right. Okay. This is, you guys can go shit in your head. And he's no longer with the Times, especially he's with the TV station now, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's with uh, oh, Channel, Channel 6. 6, yeah. So we okay. need a shit list. And he's known around the city. <laughs> I had several people contact me after that happened. 
Like, he's the Geraldo Riviera of Richmond. Well, like, yeah. he stages yeah. these events. And why, are we, <laughs> and why are we creating shit lists of Richmond? Oh, sure. No, I agree. Let's make a shit list of the entire country. <laughs> we should find people who are definitely well, There are trying. assholes everywhere. Yeah, well, it's like what, it's like what also what Duma's, uh, or Duma, Duma, I'm sorry, the lady from Labor Union said. Hila. Uh, said about, that. um, <laughs> you know, the, Food we, just, we just lost a Senate majority yeah. for Democrats in the state. They're going to attack us. What? Um, there is no longer a, a Democrat majority in the Senate mm. of Virginia. Um, okay, okay. That so basically, uh, Planned Parenthood and everybody that is involved in that coalition lost. Um, and um, you know, beyond that, we're gonna get attacked Whoa. for that. You can you can look in the next two months that we're gonna there's gonna be a lot more yeah, there's a, there's pushing a, down on the glass ceiling. Yeah, there's a relatively easy fix for that, though, too. What is that? It's attacking the Democrats. Attacking the Democrats. So we need a shit list of... You know, like, if we're attacking... Because it's not like we don't have things to... You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I personally have no, you know, no, you know, loyalty to either of the political parties. I have no problems just slinging it at the Democrats, too, because they're pretty useless. So, you know. Do you, do you mean... Um... Go on, no, I didn't have any news that. I just for backing up what he said. Oh. I, hey, mm -hmm. you lay down. Yes. Oh. And too many Americans do not realize that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, we well, have Democrat, a party system. The Democratic right? Party like, thrives on the fact that they're the good cop, right? Right, and they, they thrive <laughs> on keeping the kind of coalition that's formed in Occupy um, divided. Yep. Because you Amen. have to come to us. No. You have to come to us for your time, lay down. for our time and our attention. And it's like lay down, lay down, we don't lay, down. Down. lay down. I think that's what we're figuring out. It's like no, we don't have to go to you. And I, yeah, we can get our own attention. It's fine. That's a very important part of the agenda, I think, as well as that messaging wise, is that we're not necessarily with either party. Yeah. Because I think there are a lot of people who are reading and they want to see who, like who are you aligned with. All right. I mean, that's why this whole Tea Party thing is even being brought up. They want to see how we are going to grow and, you know, how are we politically going to really get any weight if we're not on either side. Well, does anybody have any, I mean, do we want to talk about the Tea Party thing? I mean, it's something I've been talking about a lot today, like over Twitter with different people. Wow. I mean, I only speak for myself, obviously, but, like, my thing is that an audit in response to complaining about government is fucking bullshit. I don't care who, I don't care if you're the KKK. That's intimidation, bullshit. Yeah. I, I don't have to agree know. with everything you say. Right. To know that, to know political intimidation when I see it. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know how other people feel. I, I feel exactly the same way. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't stand them, personally. But I feel exactly the same way you do. I agree. But what I even disagree even more is that now there are people in the media who want to put, you know, a Tea Party up against us in a way because... This is what we... This is the big thing that we got to avoid. That's right, yeah. I, I was going to say that. Thank you. Yeah. Because then the city comes out looking like roses. What we should be doing is making the city look like a fucking asshole for all right. this shit. Oh, okay. They're the ones that are playing the football. Right. Not us. So and not the Tea Party either. Right. So well, I'm, well, yeah, okay. The Tea Party got the got the game. I take started. that back. <laughs> <laughs> they got the game started. So let's gear this back to messaging policy. You're right. It's they haven't been. Yeah. So let's gear up and up, and up either. Let's gear this discussion because what I'm hearing is a strategy. Yeah. Right? So shit list. Researching a shit list, mm -hmm. right? Can mm -hmm. I? S I'm gonna keep you saying that because it's what it is. <laughs> I mean, right? I'd like to make a comment on the topic that we were talking about before, but if you Sorry. if you if you think it's more helpful to go with what you no, you're say it. Um, I wonder whether the Tea Party issue is in the public eye so much for that reason that it serves some people's interests to play off Tea Party versus Occupy. It does. And I also wonder if it's, and, and so every time there's a possibility of bringing up some kind of a half issue, people kick it up to the, to the stature of a real story because they kick it, they give it kick, they give it publicity. Mm -hmm. And one reason is to play it off, you know, to make this black and white, whose side are you on? And then the other is just in the interest of the spectacle, the attention, here's something to write a story about. Well, it's much more interesting if you have, if you have a, a, a potential conflict, right? 
Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I'm wondering if uh, there are a lot of reporters that really are they're looking for like a dividing line between black and white more so than actually trying to well, pursue yeah, their own right, right wing or left wing agenda. They're, they're looking they're, for like, yeah, they're looking you know, for they're looking for turmoil. But also they're basing it off facts. There are certain, um, you know, movements within the, within the national dialogue that have already made steps toward solidarity with certain parts of the, of the Tea Party movement. Yeah, they've sat down and talked to them. Right, recognize I think a lot of parts of have step, made that first step. Right. I'm wondering if we need to put out a message of at least partial solidarity with the Tea Party in that we understand their struggles, although we don't agree with everything. We're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. We understand what it's like to be singled out and vilified by the government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dude, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's so, really great. So, um, what that's is that? the thing. What because what Jones wants yeah, is that. for us to fight with them. Well, and, and that's and get off his back. Have a press and that's what the media wants. Yeah. To so, at least business as usual attack while having a nice so, drama. So, a press release in response to the Tea Party audit. Mm -hmm. Who agrees with that? As I, a I did, did anybody see the thing I sent out to the Occupy Richmond Google group today, where I was basically talking about this? It's like we should stand in solidarity with them. On the narrow issue of you shouldn't get audited when you when you speak up. I did see that. Okay. okay. Who would like to write the press? On, on that narrow issue of Tea Party audit. Mm -hmm. But apparently, like Josh was telling me last week that apparently we have a powwow with them coming. Right. It's oh, dude, there was a yeah. oh my god. Outreach put it together, and um, there was a complete meltdown <laughs> on Facebook about it. Because somebody sent out a message to like 30 of the different <coughs> occupiers, mm -hmm. and uh, there was just a complete meltdown. Did it happen? Did it not happen? It's, it's, next, it's, it's scheduled to go on next Tuesday. Oh, really? Um, outreach was going to, a, you know, going to take ideas like, do you want to elect somebody to go do this? And they were going to, you know, nominate six people and send them. And then it was like, this has to go to GA. And hmm. Bullshit, it has to go to GA. That was my response. About, was like, I'm sorry, about what? To, to send a couple of people to go talk to, to sit down and talk with the Tea Party. When a few human beings can't talk with a few other human beings. That was my that exact that, reaction. That was the process we followed with the mayor. We elected. The, yeah, the mayor is totally different. Official. Yeah. Official. Yeah. That is an official. Yeah. Well, so there was no voting exactly. process of the GA for the city council meeting on Monday night, right? Well, that was that's somewhat different as well because it's not a direct. It's not just us talking to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Tr no, true. Speaking for GA. Right. Wouldn't you expect there to be a Facebook meltdown about an issue like this, though? I mean, that's not... Nobody's a No, I mean, that, no, right? I, I do expect it, but you but know... the platform what? was designed for. Right, yeah, hmm? exactly. <laughs> Say that again, Jeremy. That's what the platform was designed for. Yeah, That kind exactly. of meltdown. Well, isn't that why it's so much more important that media puts out a press release? Because, you know, but the other thing is, if we put that press release out... Without saying something to GA, you're gonna take a kick in the ass. Yep. Mm. And if you're okay with that, you're okay with that. That's fine. <laughs> but you're going to take a kick in the ass. Maybe. That's why I think the language needs to be kind of vague. Is you're still and gonna take a kick in the ass? I think that was the idea all along. No, I absolutely. I agree. think that was the idea even before the audit thing happened. Yeah. The idea was to put out some sort of joint statement that would be like what values we share, and exactly where we do not agree with each other. Right. Well, I remember when, the, when they put together the, value, the vision statement, they, they, they read it to the GA, and everybody who disapproved it approved it. And then it was over. It was it. But they didn't actually give any kind of input or output to the message. They just were like, yeah, this group's created it, but the group did actually read the vision statement to the GA. So maybe that's what we want to do. Maybe we want to create the statement, read it at the next GA as a media announcement, and if people are really, really angry about it, they can come to us afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if they have an individual who comes up and says, I don't agree with that word or that sentence. But I don't necessarily think that we should, you know, falter from writing it. Can I wash my hands? You may. Please help make yourself at home, everybody. I'm really making, you know, a priority as to what our agenda should be like this should be the first thing we think Thank about you. we should get this done by a certain day so making kind of a like a
plan of action that's specific. It gets hard though because I think um, right now, especially with the texting group, it's mostly a reaction, reactionary. Something happens and then we deal with it. Something happens and then we deal with it. There's not enough preventative planning and organizing that's coming. From the, I, it's really starting to test me out, like a daily, like a daily basis. I'm getting up to 3 a.m. Like I work, so just trying to figure out how we can. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I work 35 hours a week and I go to school full time. So yeah. you know, like. <laughs> <Fair. laughs> yeah, you know, I totally understand. Cool. But, um, you know, yeah, it is. What it is. So our strategy so far is a shit list, and um, I will keep saying that, sorry. And then what we also and need is, like, release. and I think this is what Rich got started, which is a cue of just the process. Like, even mm -hmm. if it's, in like, like, in my industry, it's like a ticket system, right? Like, you file a ticket, mm -hmm. and then that ticket goes in, the order it was received. Oh, yeah. And there's some disposition that occurs, right? Yeah. It's either, like... Like, in this instance, like, we would either, like, schedule somebody to talk with them, mm -hmm. or we would say, we're not going to follow up with this, we're going to let this pass, mm -hmm. or we need to bring this to the group, yep. with some sort of, like, disposition mm -hmm. for each thing, so we can go through and work through it. Um, are we just getting emails in the inbox on our Gmail, or are we, do we have folders set up for importance? Like, putting an email... I think email we have one folder called Rich's To-Do List. Rich's to-do list. Because mm -hmm. he's been like spearheading it. Mm -hmm. So thank God. Yeah. So maybe we should have a folder that says like you know. That was a big problem with a lot of the events, and the the, the form for submitting events is that a lot of shit got spammed and nobody was checking the spam folder, mm -hmm. let alone the actual inbox. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've taken it upon myself to actually put up the events for the caucuses I'm involved with. That's awesome. So yeah, please do. It's um, not like no, an issue please. or anything. No. Yes, I'm, that's perfect. I actually just recently, I don't really, I don't have the Gmail password. I've never been on it. It's on the weekend. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Never mm -hmm. mind. Account. Is that it right there? That's the agenda page, but I can bring up the accounts page and show you what it is. That would be... I can show you. Just don't Thank say you. it. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Because maybe I'll just go on there and do a little. I'm not a member of this group per se, so I won't be vibing of that. This is for later. Oh, somebody has uh, gone through the email and tagged all of the interview requests. Tila. Oh, so someone's already tagged the interview request. Tila. Tila. No. No. Tila. Yeah, I'll let him know. What is it? Yeah. 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 From this day to this day, the week of whatever, this is how many interview requests we've gotten. Because how else can we measure how many, like, how, I mean, maybe next week we only have two, you know. Are the interview requests increasing? Why is that? Why, you know, I think probably because of the press kit being put on the website and maybe because hey, hey. Of, the, of the audit. Yeah. So kind of getting an idea of interest. The interest is changing. It's not just people coming to our website Keep anymore. It's people actually wanting Keep interviews. And that in itself is very important. You're being bad. Come on. Mm. And like you said, prioritizing and being able to turn to someone you don't know how to answer an interview question. Like, <clears throat> no. <laughs> well, you know, one thing that might be nice is, you know, a lot of these blogs and like little sites that are asking for media attention. Can we just give them like email interviews where we could just collaboratively like answer well, these questions? What, that's what this one is asking for, but I can't figure out where it's supposed to be going. I can't figure out who the outlet is, right? Oh, is that the Henrico one? Dude, when you said like Francis Pugh, I was like, yeah. Yeah, that's who it is. Who is that? When I lived in Hariko, like there were like a few blogs that were like specific to Hariko, and I remember hers being just like a really sort of like country Virginia 
conservative one. Yeah, that, that, that definitely makes sense if you look at the... But to me, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, like, to me, that's, like, where the, like, the biggest opportunities are for us. Yeah. Like, you can think whatever you want about the Tea Party's politics, but the idea of a shadow, parallel, deliberative citizen body making decisions that make the government look like shit makes the Tea Party come in their pants. Like, that is their wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. That's what they love. And, like, they should understand that a lot of what we're doing is what they want to be doing. I get that, but that also essentially... Nope, nope. That essentially assumes that we're going to be able to get past the, the gatekeepers. Well, this is why, you know... If what you need is somebody who can speak the speak to get past them, like, I've worked with the Tea Party before. Yeah, it's not that necessarily, though. That's not what I mean by the gatekeepers. Uh -huh. What I'm talking about is the media. Because when you go... When the media's you look a whole different thing. Well, I'm, I'm talking about their media. Their version of us. Yeah, but their version of us yeah. is even less sophisticated than we are. Okay. I mean, that would be my argument. Okay. Like, and what... I under I'm going to put a lot of my cards on the table. Like, I don't think all of these people are bad people. No, I don't either. Um, I think... I think what they're looking for is something that makes sense in the political world because from their sort of, like, white racialist, like... This country isn't the country that I grew up in. Well, no, because it's not all white, old, rich people running. <laughs> right. That's a good thing. Right. Like, but, but, but they still, if, if everything is going to be torn down, then what's going to be erected in their place is their question. Like, right. And there are opportunities there to have human dialogue. I really think so. Some of the people are just assholes. Right. But there are opportunities to have real dialogues where people sort of like begin to see things from a different point of view. They're begin. Part of mm -hmm. They're part of the ninety-nine cent percent. They're yeah, I, you know, I don't like the whole ninety-nine percent. <laughs> no, neither do I. I've never liked that. <laughs> it's, it's like might is right. Because <laughs> the one percent that really matters is not the one percent. It's like it's the point zero 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 one percent. And, you know, 99% is pretty goddamn messed up <laughs> um, in a lot of ways. I know we're not here to discuss tea our, our thoughts on the Tea Party, but I'd like to, hey, I'd still like to no. add to what you said. Get over here. And I think that no. there are a lot of people in the Tea Party movement, yeah. virtually all of them, that are very... <laughs> Move. Move it. Yeah, put her on the leash for me. She wants food. She wants food. She has nuts with her food. So there are a lot of people in the Tea Party movement that are very angry at the status quo. There are right. a lot of people in our movement, me included, that are just very angry at the status quo. They institutionalize the status quo in government, and in particular in the tax taxing regime of government. And we institutionalize the status quo in big business and the business government nexus. But I think that it's, I could come around to some of what they're thinking a little bit, but I think there's lots of opportunities for them to come around to our thinking, especially with the business government nexus. You got it? Not only would I say that, I would say that um, a lot of the like, Ron Paul wing of the Tea Party, it's way more socially liberal than a lot of people give the credit for. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, they don't like all this like pro-life, like flag humber. Right, right. Bullshit. No. Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally. They just don't. Pri it's just like it's not a priority for them. Right. right? The priority for them is the empire. Which right. Right. I understand, you know? Right. Because <laughs> right. people are dying. Right. right. <laughs> Kids and women are like, and, and, and like people are dying every day in drone attacks by our supposedly caring, concerned president. Right. Fuck that. Right. So we have derailed a little bit. Um, 
Do you guys want to move on to website improvements? I mean, did, do we have like any sort of messaging consensus? Um, that we have a strategy. We have this get back to, um, to non-agreeing groups, but coming to the group about whether or not we actually want to correspond with them. Um, we should get a knowledge of um, national news coverage. Um, we were talking about a Google Calendar of contacts and making sure we keep up to date with those contacts and then making a list of local Democrats, Republicans, and national and state people who don't necessarily agree with us and really build up that argument against them so that they can't make those critical remarks about us or they will have, it'll be a lot harder for them to do so. And then first and foremost, we talked about a press release as response to Tea Party audit in, the, in that terminology that you were mentioning, Jeremy. Um, a message of partial solidarity to the Tea Party and then reading that statement at the GA so that we're not really stepping on toes, but practicing our media group autonomy, which we yeah, have been granted mean, by the GA. I mean, cause here, yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go to GA with that because that's unless somebody just wants to take the axe kicking for it, and that's you know. Well, do we want to write that statement now, or do you want someone in this group to write that after the meeting, and maybe having that done by not tomorrow, maybe you know by the end of the week? Well, we have a GA tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to have this ready for either that one or Thursday. Okay. I mean, it'd be nice to have a timely response to this. That really, because mm -hmm. like, all I know is what's going on on Twitter. But things move really quick on Twitter, and like, the the Occupy Richmond hashtag mm -hmm. is not about Occupy Richmond. Mm -hmm. It's about the Tea Party right. and the fact that they see this as Occupy Richmond is hacking them through their government. Obama bot proxies. Well, because they haven't. That um, needs to be nipped in the bud. Yeah, but that's also what I'm talking about when I'm saying the me their media. Right. So, like, what better way to fucking screw their media than to say, just like Marty Jewell did to the fucking when they when that Tea Party lady talked at the last city council, not last one, the one before that. Right. Like, I think you should get your money back. You shouldn't have to pay for your First Amendment rights. Like, that is like the most magnanimous. Mm -hmm. Like, who can argue with that? Right. Certainly not the Tea Party. Well, because they're fussing about a lot more than that. They're fussing about not having a meeting with Mayor Jones, but the like, Occupy did. I mean... I'm all about making Mayor Jones look like a fucking dick, so, because okay, so he who, chose the wrong side. So who wants to write the statement for the, um, the GA on tomorrow night or Thursday? I'll just stab it and send it to you. I mean, we can do it on the wiki too. We can do this collaboratively. Oh, yeah. I can start drafting up something right now. Sure. Cool. Yeah, go for it, man. Okay, yeah. so that's done. Oh, cool. Um, but so I'm not taking full responsibility for it at all. We'll Your name will not be appear attached to this. Just make sure it gets on the wiki and what part should it be under? On the Any wiki? part. It Any doesn't matter. Part. Just create a page. Okay, create a page. I guess I have uh, something to add about the messaging thing. Sure. And uh, this is maybe uh, has to do with Facebook status updates and stuff like that. Is I think I think whoever writes the status update, and if it's several people, everyone should like initial initial the thing that like post it. This is like a criticism I had of Occupy Richmond, the, the Facebook page, before I really got involved. When I was just like basically like a lurker on the Facebook page, and I was interested in it and stuff like that was. You know, these different messages would be posted. And I was like, who is this writing this stuff, you know? And I don't know. It was something I was critical of, like, early on. And that that kind of, like, it's more accountability. And I think it's, I don't know, it's a good thing to do. That's just an awesome idea. Yeah, it, actually, I don't I know really why. like oh, that. Good. I never even thought of that. Yeah, I mean, I know that when I was working, um, I mean, I've worked with a couple nonprofits, and whenever we put out something, we always have to initial it. It's kind of just like an accountability thing, but also get for people to get an idea of who's really, you know, you get better with practice. But not everybody creates. I mean, not everybody does it equally as good a job or whatever, or different job. That's a very good idea. Okay. Well, we can adopt that just as a policy, or what? Like, before we totally abandon the messaging thing, like, mm -hmm. can we at least get an idea of, like, what brought up this, like, 
idea that we need to tackle messaging. Like, what was the problem? Was it the problem, like, the initial problem, like, William, whether or not he could post, like, personal stuff and, like, or was it something other than that? Well, that was part of it. It was because he posted basically an op-ed, essentially, but it was on the front page. So we And so there was a meltdown over that, and then there was a meltdown over the whole, um, the whole thing with uh, Jordan at camp. Oh, tweeting, live tweeting. Yeah. Live tweeting what was happening with the dude trying to Drive run people, people over or whatever. Yeah. Well, that was weird. If I, I'm sorry. I, I was on my way to work, and all of a sudden I just realized that things were hitting the fan. And this is exactly what I mean by reactionary work where everybody was freaking out and trying to find the person that was doing it on camp who was tweeting, not knowing who it was. Me getting 12 messages on my phone saying, who is it, who is it, who is it, and nobody knowing. And me being like, let's all stay calm and let's redirect the Twitter messaging. Let's put out a message saying, everybody stay calm and remind everyone else of our nonviolent identity. Hey, what's going on, buddy? But we did not do that. We decided not to redirect the conversation. Well, that's, that's Instead, we decided to go and find somebody and silence them, which I, you know, and then we delete a post. Yeah. That were retweeted. <laughs> that were recreated. But the, not everybody who was on the Twitter were people who were in the movement. There were people on the Twitter from Style Weekly, people who, who have no idea who we are about and are now getting the impression that we're deleting people's posts. Yeah. Well... And, I mean, it was an opportunity for us to take control of that conversation, and we didn't. So. Another post to leave? I know. We were just we're talking about messaging policy. Well, um, that, that, was, that was part of the reason that I sent that email out, because it's like, let's make some decisions about how we're using our social media, and let's make some decisions about exactly, like, what kind of message it is that we're trying to send. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that is the, the heart of the problems that we've had and these discussions that we've had and the, you know, the, yeah. the blow-ups we've had over this kind of stuff. So why don't we like just make some hard decisions and, and figure that out ahead of time so that we're cutting that off so it doesn't have to be reactionary. So we can just be like, well, okay, I know this is supposed to go here or I know that is supposed to go there and it's taken care of when it's done. Also, it wasn't part of this about about the blocking and like Chris Dorsey and stuff like that. I thought that was like something that was part that's of this something initial. That's going to have to go to GA because really, to be completely honest, I just don't want to hear about it anymore. Uh -huh. I'm tired of it. We're talking about a messaging line. Yeah. As far as the people having like trolls or on Facebook, I don't think it's about trolls. Sports. I think it's about what our policy is. Right, about just coming up with an idea of like, okay, this is Facebook, this is generally what we want this specific tool to be used for. This is Twitter, this is what we want this specific tool to be used for. I mean, as far as, I've always viewed it as Twitter is kind of like the, oh shit, this is happening right now type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, yes. Facebook as, this is happening tomorrow or the next day kind of thing. Facebook, I mean the uh, website being, this is happening later this week kind of thing. Hmm. Um, so you but, see it as a time frame. Yeah, that's what, I mean, I, I, that's how I've always viewed Facebook, uh, social media as far as when is it relevant. Can we open up that, to that, that, what does everybody else think of those social utilities? I think you'd agree with me that it's more than just it being quick updates on Twitter. It's also about a much more intense kind of conversation that opens up around that. Right. And like the way that we usually, I mean, I don't know about you, the way that I usually uh, further that conversation is like when it starts to get into like a debate kind of mode, I switch to Jeremy's Twitter account and right. answer it through, tw through Jeremy, but it's still something I'm doing on behalf of Occupy Richmond. It's just, I know that I don't speak for Occupy Richmond. But on Facebook, that's a lot more difficult, I feel like. On on Facebook, it's much, there's much more sense of officialness. Yes. Around the space where the conversation happens. Yes. Well, on, on Facebook, as far as the comments, um, I mean, I've always been in favor of free reign over what it, I mean, even the, even the trolls are, can say what they want to say and, and post whatever they want to post as long as it does not sound offensive or derogatory. 
Well, um, see that, and that's the other thing, though, is like who then decides what's defensive and derogatory. I think well, somebody's what's saying like or? saying some saying things are like you know that are in, that are anti-homosexual, anti-racist, um, things that are meant to incite. You mean racist? Um, sorry. Say? Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. I, I meant to say something else, but not switch to racist. Um, but things that are that are, are racist or anti or anti-homosexual or just or um, I mean just things that are, are meant to incite people to get angry about. Mm -hmm. um, those are the kind of things I think are fair to uh, to delete. And I think I think we're all competent enough to recognize the difference. I, I understand that, and I honestly believe the same thing. I don't think that the GA does. Well, they, the, what, 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 what do you have to say, Mark? There's actually in the um, page, like, settings, there's a blacklist um, where you can actually just blacklist certain words that people say, and it just won't even show up. So, like, hmm. you know, the N-word, the right, F-word. Right, 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 right. I mean, the F word relating to gay yeah, people. I use the word <laughs> myself. So. <laughs> and I think not on the official no, Facebook. The, and, and also, the F U word or oh, the F A word? One. Oh, that one. You want the F U word. <laughs> and also trying to get away, as, uh, away from reactionary as possible. So, yeah, the blacklist is great because that way it's working for us to help control the, the message of it. But also, what can we do in a preventative sense? I mean, can we put up posts reminding people or put something on the, on the website or on the Facebook reminding people that this is a safe space just like our GA that goes by certain rules of identity? No. It doesn't? No. No, it doesn't. I mean, because it's anybody who wants to has access to that page. And All they have to do is press like. And then they can come. Right. And quite honestly, where, I, I gonna, that where on, earth, on earth would you put that? You put a, a smoking, uh, you put a thing next in us in a room for people to, an ashtray for people to remind them to put their cigarettes out and they do it. Well, you where, need, you need to put you up, you need to construct reminders. I don't know. Because Facebook is, does not, we've over, almost overloaded Facebook with information. Did you click right. info? The info page. It's like this long yeah. of information about us. I don't know a single person out of, out of the 9,000 people that have liked us. They've probably read the, the whole thing. Oh, I, cool, I, cool. Underst I, mean, I understand what you're saying, yeah. but you're you're also talking about a specific variety of person who comes to the page directly for yes. You know, they come to be inflammatory. They come because they have their own agenda. And at this point, I am not comfortable with the. I don't think the GA really has the uh, has the confidence in us to make those decisions. Like okay. you need to be blocked. You mm -hmm. need this needs to be gotten rid of. I, I mean, quite frankly, I, I think the, I mean, this is my own personal opinion, but the GA tends to try to be too politically correct about things, and they lose sight of common sense. You know, I completely <laughs> agree, but that's, you know, and they also don't have to, like, you know, they're not all dealing with the fallout. But. I think politically correct is a bad word for it. I think we always have to have an awareness of how things that are said affect other people. Well, so not always politically correct. It's just a bad. Right. But the issue is, hasn't the issue been about exactly that that is occurring? I mean, instead of immediately jumping to censoring people, how can we prevent that? Because the truth is, we have been censoring people. Um, I mean, I haven't once deleted someone's comment. I have deleted pictures that are offensive. Right. And there, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not, right now, well, I'm not saying any particular individual is. I'm just saying as a group, we all have. You know, I, I haven't seen or been taken part of or seen anyone else delete a comment. So I'm, I don't I'm, I'm at a loss to, to know what, what is spurning the, what is spawning this conversation? What is, what is the source of this? 
problem. I don't think it's Every happening day. conscientiously. I think hey. it's happening merely because of reactionary impulse. Because, oh my god, oh my god, we have to delete this because somebody might think this. Instead of just calming down and having a policy, knowing exactly what to do in that situation. Example, that tweeting craze that happened. Why didn't we know a policy? We didn't have a policy in place saying, how do we redirect the conversation? My idea was let's put out a statement saying, let's all remember to try not to escalate the problem. When nobody put that out. Well, I don't have a Twitter. I, you know, that was what I wanted it to, the conversation to remain calm. This is still not a messaging conversation. Right. That we're having. Well, I, th I mean, it's about Twitter messaging. Right. But that, you know, like, the, the way to be proactive about that is to make some decisions about how we're using each. They're all specific tools and they can all do different things if we use them correctly. Right. <clears throat> establish like a general, you know, a kind of general outline of this is how we use this particular tool. So what are, what are the ideas then for Facebook? You know, we have this as an official space where conversation happens for the next day timeline, <clears throat> immediate, not the immediate, like Twitter. Right. But also, you mentioned that we don't have a sense of control because anybody and any, everybody can go on with their own agenda. Right. Well, that, I mean, that is what it is, and it is what it is. I don't think that really, so, I don't think that really has anything to do with a, me with a messaging from our standpoint, anyway. Okay. Because at the very least, what we can do is drown them. Or, yeah, we can, okay, so drowning. <laughs> well, I think I think something kind of cool you can do is you uh, can just post as the official page saying, you know, this doesn't represent the organization, and this person speaking as an individual or something. Bingo. I don't know, something like that. Yep. Just kind of to disable or disarm something. Right. So, how, where would we post that on Facebook? I would say on the thread that was a problem, but perceived as a problem. <laughs> and how are we going to agree on what is not a, a post that is politically correct with our views? I'm just throwing this out there. Can I ask a question about this topic? Of course. And this can be a conversation that might actually wind around and around and around and around, but I'm wondering um, what it is that we don't like about comments. Well, there are certain comments that we don't like, and why is it that we don't like them? Um, you know, and, and, and I'd rather use the term, I am offended by this comment, I'm concerned that somebody else might be offended by this comment, rather than I find this comment offensive, owning the emotion, as it were. I think um, one thing that would be, just, I feel like the most obvious is just false information. There's one thing that we need to do. Um, have that thought on a second. I have deleted a post or two that was just blatantly false information, saying that we're doing this or that at a specific time or day when I knew that to be false. And I took it down because I didn't want that message to get out because it was false information. Is that like the Dominion Power protest? Was that an um, example? I did not see that or notice it was gone. I've heard about that, but I did not delete the Dominion Power protest. Um, I don't even think that the Dominion Power protest was actually deleted. Oh, really? I just I heard it, that it was. And so. here's, the, here's, another, here's another thing. <laughs> I people think he get, doesn't really know how to use the page. <laughs> I think he does uh, And also, I mean, people, that he people, does it. Yeah. <laughs> one thing, I rarely look at the public Can, wall. Yeah, me, I rarely me look. I mean, you, you look at the, look the, the notice wall, notifications, yeah. it is a li like <laughs> within an hour's time, a list of new posts this long. Yeah. I don't sit there and watch and look through all that crap. Yeah. So if someone posted that wall, well, I mean, someone posted that wall, okay. so I don't know. Let's do the conversation too. Do we think Facebook is working as a tool for Occupy Richmond? And there are certain things that it is working for. Can we talk about that? What is it working? How is it working for us? It's working to get uh, events out, I think, anyway. It seems yeah. like the, the, most, of the, most of the word that is getting out about the events that we're actually doing is probably coming from Facebook. It's coming from Facebook and word of mouth, anyway. And it's also good for sharing media from other Occupy right. um, 
and sharing like videos, fun things, you know, some lightness every once in a while. Right. And that was actually one of the things that came out of our last media meeting, actually, that we yeah. want to really start building more images from the national sure. world on that. So, yeah. so I'm cool. glad that you noticed that. That means that we're working at something. Finally, it was finally like I posted a video this morning, morning and it was kind of funny. Yeah, it's cool. But I posted it as Occupy Richmond. It's so perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's all those videos. Yeah. <laughs> the media meeting? Uh, so, okay. As many meetings as you can, <laughs> my understanding. But I, I think one thing we need to do is just have a blacklist of certain words that should just automatically be pushed into the hidden posts or, you know, blocked. Just just words. It doesn't have to be statements, just certain key words that are, you know, offensive. Do you have an example of one? Faggot, <laughs> N-word, shall I go on? As in, do we have to have examples? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, at a certain point, you can't discuss a topic without using the word to describe it. I mean, that. Right, the word out of the context of the sentence. Yeah. But also, words are so loaded. I mean, what if someone in California is reading the website and they agree with the person who made that statement? It's perspective. I mean, that's why I think this is a reactionary. <laughs> this is still not really a messaging conversation. Okay. This is something else altogether. So let's go back to that so, policy thing we want to do, right? I mean, if we want to do that, but that's. Have we that's, moved on from messaging, and are we talking about Facebook now, or? They're, they're, they're the same conversation, essentially, because you're talking about messaging strategy and messaging policy, essentially. Right. And how are you using each? Right. 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 We, we recognize Facebook, Twitter, and the website all as tools. Right. We're talking about how Facebook works right now. We've right. mentioned events and sharing media from other occupies, which right. is, you, Mark, noted that that's, I mean, that's obviously a strength of ours now because of the last media meeting where we emphasized that was very important. Right. to try to build the Facebook interest. But now we're talking about how do we make that policy as far as, I mean, as far as emails go, like from outside media, when they contact us, are we prioritizing certain media sources? Are we researching those media sources and understanding who their audience is? Like, Who's going to read the paper in Richmond tomorrow? Or who's going to read the paper in D.C. tomorrow about us? And which one is strategic to our long-term goals? Mm -hmm. For what purpose do we need to, to get that detailed into what we're doing? And what, what, what benefit will it serve to be that... Um, the word for, but I mean, to be that um, detailed about how, how close we're looking at the well, for example, scrutinizing each and everything. Just for example, well, um, you know, I called you yesterday about that DC media source, and you mentioned that you would not email him back, and then you did. I'm sorry. Oh, that part. Yeah. Okay. I, That's messaging policy. Right. I have no problem with it now because it's done. But maybe we could have a stronger message going to a national headline. Okay, I, I didn't realize that was the one you were talking about because I've received multiple um, things about that. A new thing popped up in my inbox did this morning. I thought this was a completely new thing. I didn't realize that this was the same thing you were referring to, but it popped up in my inbox this morning and I addressed it as soon as I got it. We talked about it last night. I know, that's why I thought it was something new, because okay. I figured it was something that had already been... Well, I already yeah. came up in my mind four answers that you could have said, and that was definitely one of them. So, like I said, I'm over it. I'm glad we're talking about messaging policy now, but this is what this is about. Are we thinking about agenda? Or are we just thinking about making more buzz? Because the truth is, I don't think the media is going to be interested in us forever, unless we become more constructive with our views. Um, what, what are you 
suggest? I just thought we'd open, we, we were going to open the conversation about policy, and this is not something that I even put on the agenda. This is something that was on the agenda when I came. Um, I think one thing, though, that we have to keep in mind, um, and I definitely agree with you that we need to be <coughs> working on these things, but we do have to keep in mind uh, the Facebook views, stuff like that, is related to other things that are happening. Like, we haven't had a major event in a while, so like don't, don't get too worked up about it. We do need to think about it. But like, it's not like the end of the world or anything. We're not. We're, we're not necessarily worried about. We're, you know, I personally am not necessarily worried about the traffic. Yeah. I'm worried about the cohesion of this particular yeah. group. That's fair. And that if we develop some some just kind of guidelines that this is how we're using each one of these specific tools, then it will keep us from choking each other at yeah. some point in the future. <laughs> because we get stressed out, and the next thing you know, somebody's feelings are hurt. Somebody's upset. We're, you know, in a tiff. Oh, and, and, and just to clarify, my feelings are not hurt. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not, okay. I'm just, you know, like it's Sorry. happened already on more than one occasion. And if that continues over time, that's going to do some really serious st damage to the solidarity of the group. I agree. So, I agree. I, you know, so. I mean, as far, I mean, if we're speaking on messaging, is we can I think the first week or two we had kind of had our shit together as far as sending a message about what we're doing and when things got complicated is when all of a sudden we kind of lost sight of our our vision per se mm -hmm. um, we started I mean the Facebook post got more and more detailed on specific things and we got um, we kind of got flustered and scattered and um, I'm, I would really like to bring things back to square one. You're looking for an outlet? Yeah. Um, got any outlets around, Jeremy? Outlets? You got any outlets around? Uh, plenty. Um, just where are they? <laughs> um, <laughs> you're very well hidden. Actually, like right behind have, that big mass of pillows. Oh, okay. Right there is an outlet. There's also an outlet over here under this bench here that might okay. be more convenient. Right here, There's right actually right. A, a like power supply there for a MacBook if you want to use it. I, you know, I right. think. Yeah, you're welcome to use that. I think uh, you're right for the most part. That like we got, we ended up in Kanawha, and things just kind of between the just the the flurry of being in Kanawha and dealing with the being in camp and all the things that came along with it, uh, we ended up just overwhelmed essentially. Uh, I'm. I'm wondering if there's, I mean, on the subject of messaging, if we can think of a, a messaging um, strategy in the sense that we can, there's a message that we can all agree upon as a media team that is in line with our, just our general purpose of being an occupy, mm -hmm. that we can stick to and um, branch off of that message, but still stay on that on that the simple specific message. And um, I mean, it's hard to. I mean, the way I think, it's hard to translate into English. But uh, <laughs> well, let's 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 ask a couple of questions, Ben. Or let me ask a couple of questions and see where the rest of you guys are at. How many got? How many of you guys <coughs> think that <clears throat> we have gotten all of the mileage as far as the media is concerned, and as far as the media team that we're pro probably going to get out of dealing with city council and fighting with the mayor? Are people tired of hearing that? I, for one, still want to. I feel like there's still. Um, I've, I've, I agree on the, on the and, I, and I understand the loss. I'm, I'm just saying from a strictly media perspective, okay. from what we're saying to what we're putting on the Facebook, what we're putting on Twitter, 
Like, because there's a different thing between what we're talking about in GA and what's going, what we are as a media team are putting on Twitter, what we're putting on Facebook, what we're doing with all of those things. It's one thing to say, you know, we're going to be at, at city council at this point, at this time. It's another thing to push it. Because, and that's a, that's a messaging question. Like, what message are we sending to the people who are watching us? I mean, I, I would have thought they'd get excited about, um, about the fact that we were having intro, uh, legislation introduced that would directly, that's directly for and to assist us in what we're right. trying to do. I would have thought that would have been a no-brainer when it comes to people showing up and getting involved. And last night I was sorely disappointed and I realized I must not know shit because people showed up and act like they couldn't care less. Because I don't think they did. And, That's and what I, I'm saying. And, and that is kind of... Know what to, or they don't know what, what hat is required of them. You know what I mean? Like, I mean... It's like one thing when you're asking someone to show up for a direct action thing, <coughs> to give it something, you're given a simple task to do and, and stand there. It's another thing when you're asking someone to be there for a political, a political motivation. Well, well yeah. Also, uh, wasn't, wasn't that paper just like introduced? So it, it was like something yeah. that came at the very end of the meeting mm -hmm. and it's going to go to a committee meeting first and then well, it's going to be voted on at the next meeting I think or that, and, a I, mean, month. I understand the, the last of days of attitude in that aspect but we did have people that were speaking on behalf of Occupy Richmond yeah. and you would think that alone would bring some people out to show that we are you know, in solidarity with each other we, we, you know, and we're, we back each other up but we really don't have the, unlimited time though. Like right, I don't know, like, and that's I'm super stressed out. Like I try to go to everything, but it's really stressful. So we have to pick certain things and push those. And things. the and the people that you're talking about who want to do that mm -hmm. are the people who are already in two work groups. You know what I mean? So they're showing up at work group meetings all week. They're yeah. going to uh, GA once or twice a week at least. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like well, they're they're. I agree. How was the turnout at court today? Uh, it's the really worst. Well, the other thing about that is that that was absolutely last minute. Yes, that, and it was the middle of the. I think it was a middle of the day. For the last minute, though. Yeah. So we, yeah. I think we we did jump a few people out out of bed, but um, course, so to speak. But uh, again, that's something I really was hoping maybe a larger um, presence. Of it. But it was at two o'clock in the afternoon. It was the last minute, so I'm not going to get mad about. Um, I think uh, I would definitely be very disappointed if there's not double the number of people there for the appeal. I wanted to jump in. You're rich, right? Alex. I'm sorry, Alex. That's okay. Is there a rich here? There is not a rich here. in the media. Group. Okay. In the media. Um, but the point that you that started this conversation was whether you think that there's still enough relevancy in the issue of us versus the mayor, us versus city council. And we're kind of getting away from that. Right. And I wanted to point out that um, to consider that maybe that's losing its, its steam, there is always the possibility of new developments coming up with that that might Absolutely. actually make it more important Absolutely. again. Absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that at all. But beyond that, I don't really have an answer for, for okay. whether, whether it's losing relevancy or not. But, I mean, if we're, if we're going to be like an actual team, an actual media team, then we need to like have that kind of discussion, which is are we getting... Are we getting the mileage of, out of that media-wise that makes it worth it for us to keep keep pursuing it? Other than to say we're going to be at city council, come support us, put it out there, and not like hammer it and not yeah. push it because that's the other side of it is there are things that we can be pushing and there are things that we can be hammering. There are other things that we can be doing with that space and that time because. The other thing that we have to consider as a media team is that we're fighting for time. The people who are supporting us and the people who are coming to our Facebook page, they're not us. They don't spend all of their time with Occupy, you know what I mean? Like, so, and you know, a lot of us don't spend all of our time with Occupy, but you know what I mean? Like, it's a limited, yeah. so we have to make that time count. And so Will's response was that this, this, 
Marty's proposal he regards as a very, very important thing for us. Yeah, because I mean, I think it's, it, he did it for us, period. I mean, that was something that he, he well, he's a politician. Right. He wasn't left out of that equation. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good call. But, you know, his constituency, I mean, I think he sees economic justice as in line with his political right. need to appeal to his constituents. Oh. Um, which makes which him, isn't the worst thing in the world. No, 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 no. Which makes him an, essentially a natural ally. Is he a Democrat or a Republican? In spite of himself. Right. In, in, in spite of himself. He's Democrat. probably a Democrat, but the city yeah, council doesn't adhere towards Right. This, does not claim a party. Nonpartisan. Neither do we, correct? No. Oh, I'm a Republican. <laughs> Stopped. <laughs> um, cool. Um, and well, just for a second ago, you said, is there a message we can create? Uh, I wrote dot, dot, dot. That message for what? A message for um, every press release we send out? No, but a, a, just a find a general idea of what we're here for and I feel like the mess that message has gotten lost like people are even amongst our, our most occupier I feel like they're wondering what is our cause again what is, what are we why do I need to come out to this well, event yeah I think the cause for why we're here now is different than it was when we oh, showed yeah. up when, than it, it is now for me personally anyway different than it was when I showed up mm -hmm. or somewhat different what has changed about it? Um, I mean, I showed up because this was the first movement that was uh, talking about the economic situation in a way that was not uh, that was not particularly partisan, and that uh, seemed to be taking both government and business to account for the problem. And so it was like, Bottom okay, that makes here. sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not leaving anybody out. It's not saying you can't show up, and it's not saying, uh, you know, it's not making a particular enemy of any one specific uh, population of people among, you know, the citizens. And I was like, okay, I can, I can definitely sign on with something like that. And now it's somewhat different. It's changed. Now a lot of it is, for me anyway, is the realization that is the realization to the degree, or the degree to which, uh, like a lot of our like First Amendment rights and stuff have been legislated away, essentially, kind of just picked apart, and that's troubling. Can I get so. like a like a feel for the group how we're feeling about still talking about messaging policy? Do we still want to keep going forward with this meeting talking about this as an important agenda item, or should we move on to? Occuphone or educational packet or media budget proposal and come back to it? I mean, I, I, what do you guys feel? Um, just think, one more thought. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I was, I just did a paper about um, a lot of the issues we're having, not specifically about us, but more um, systemic issues of like free speech and how it's taken away um, through these corporations. And I feel like we can make a cohesive message out of those two things. And I think that maybe that's what we should be doing, is say this is a systemic problem, this is the local application of the systemic problem. Because that sort of gets everything. Yeah, no, that's great. So it sounds like there are a few that want to keep on with messaging. That's cool. So um, you mentioned, are we still on board for political city council involvement. We think so. We should keep pushing at that, media-wise. We shouldn't ignore it, if anything. We should definitely not ignore it. Um, yeah, no, that's, yeah. I mean, that, they do have valid points that maybe people have kind of said, screw it all, and not they don't even care about the, the, uh, the bureaucratic aspects of it all. But um, you're, we're not going to be able to bring down the system just by occupying a park or, or marching around <coughs> City Hall all day. Whatever, I'm so. writing a little chart right here. All right, what, are our, what are media's political causes that we're exemplifying with the means of media? One is this city council involvement, right? Another is, I know off the back of my hand, is um, the fact that they did not get granted <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> this is awful. Yeah, what's going 
Um, there, you know, the people, they did not get a continuance today. Um, also, they're depending on public defenders who have up to here of cases and are not able to focus any time on their case. So the political agenda of them, they're trying to really figure out is, now that we haven't been granted this continuance, mm -hmm. how are we going to get a lawyer who can actually make a freedom of speech case? They need a better paying lawyer. Who is their lawyer? I'm it's just a public say, defender. I appreciate the enthusiasm here tonight, but I do not want to be videotaped tonight. I don't want to be recorded tonight. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so, what, are you going to make a comment and I should turn it off and... I just don't want to be videotaped tonight. Okay. Would you feel comfortable if you turn it off? and you? Because I'd like you to speak <coughs> when you want to. Yeah, I, just, I don't want to be recorded tonight at all. Okay. Uh, I'll... You're going to make your comment now? Well, I want to be able to speak freely. Uh, well, <laughs> let me know. I have to know when you're going to speak so I can turn off the camera. Go turn it off for good? No, because uh, I'm for transparent meetings. I think the, m the majority of us, Alex, don't have a problem with it, and I mean, I'm sorry that you have a, an issue with it, but it just... But if you'd like to speak, speak freely, I mean, just let me know, and do you want to speak now? I'm happy to turn it off. Is there a plug anywhere on this Well, side? I think if we have... Uh, I personally uh, feel if we have a member of our group who is over. feeling <laughs> uncomfortable, um, I don't know. I can't speak for the group. Stuff is more expensive than I am. No, no, no. <laughs> Shall we sacrifice it's more expensive. It's like members? Just morally voice. Matters more. <laughs> we don't have to sacrifice the voice. I'll just turn it off and it won't be documented. Is that something we... Is there, a, is there like a, me, a middle ground that we can reach on this? Well done. Like can we just turn it off until maybe you... If you feel like you can just speak, can you show us the hand signal or something that you really want to speak? Can we meet? I want to be able to speak just as freely as I did in all the other meetings that were not recorded. Is it an issue of speaking or is it an issue of your face? Both my image and my voice. Because if you're panning around. I haven't gotten him very much, plus I'm on a low light setting where things kind of come up pretty blurry, anyways. Okay. Is there any way you can just get audio? Yeah, I can just focus the camera up down at the ground or something like that. <laughs> I don't want the audio recorded either. All right. um, We've had media meetings before that have been recorded, and this has never come up before. Meeting. So this isn't us trying to like, like we're not trying to like like railroad you or. I'm curious. It's just this curious. has never come up before. A lot of things that we do in Occupy are recorded. I haven't heard this concern for anything else we've done. Why is the media meeting more... Stupid? I understand it you know, to a certain degree because we may, we may not really want to be telling everybody what we're talking about in the media meeting, what kind of strategy we're, we're planning on using and all that kind of stuff, but at the same time if that's what the groups have consensed on and that's what they want to do... Then well, we I never really consented on it, but uh, you know, for me it's really important because I've I come out of the city council background where committee meetings aren't recorded they're audio recorded but basically the public has no knowledge or information and i think this is like a historically important event i want to document as much of it as possible I, totally get that. I think that people in the local our local movement deserve to be able to see and be here via the videotape and that that's another way we're promoting transparency and participation you know i don't know people actually check out these meetings you oh, know I'm, when i I'm, post them so i know I, and and that's why i haven't actually said anything yeah. about it well. but I, i'm saying that i understand having some second some misgivings about it yeah no i get it absolutely i'm just saying that you know that was when, when i first showed up that was one of my first like oh do we really want to put that everywhere <laughs> how are we how, <laughs> so, are, how are we feeling kind of um are we feeling like i feel like i probably should go out for a cigarette now do you guys want take to a take a break oh, yes. one minute just to like Thank you.